Shane here at the Brick House, back again with another video. Today I am reviewing set 1297. This is the Boutique Hotel. It is an 18 plus set with 3066 pieces and it celebrates 15 years of modular buildings. As you can see right off the bat, unlike most modular buildings, this building is based on a triangular design rather than the standard rectangular square design. This set represents a boutique hotel that is seen in many European cities with its kind of old world 17th century charm. It is a really wonderful looking piece. Now this set pays tribute to the numerous modulars that have come before it and there are a lot of instances and references to past modulars that are built into this set. Now I'm not going to go through all of the Easter eggs because part of the fun of building this set or part of the fun I had when building this set was reading the instruction booklet and seeing how many of the things in this set and the characters relate to a previous modular. So what I'm first going to get into are the mini figs. Now there are seven minifigures. There is this young woman who is a tourist. There is a cart vendor, and the cart vendor harkens back to the days of the cafe corner. There is the world traveler. This minifigure is the first one you're introduced to, and this is the receptionist. And the instructions ask you to point out some of her favorite places like Shea Albert or some shop in the Grand Emporium. This is the bellhop. This is the woman who manages the art gallery, and you can tell by her kind of really cool artistic glasses and up here is the accountant and he actually was the accountant during the brick bank so there are seven minifigures and some of them reference past sets now from the outside it is a three-story modular with a roof on the bottom is the entryway to the hotel along with an art gallery and steps leading up to an outdoor cafe the second story has two suites and the third story has one penthouse suite one of the things you should notice when you build this set is that all the doors and windows these big square windows open up as well as this door along with the front door and the doors to the art gallery so you have to make sure when you build the windows that you put the clips on the top piece so that they swing open and I'll show you how those swing open a little later the outside design looks fantastic it has these lovely details of these flower blossoms in the windows the flags these nice archways and columns the entryway to the hotel this nice pillar that leads up to a top spire that I'll show you a bit later and over here there is a billboard on the wall and this is like your standard bulletin board where you can take uh, advertisements and each one of these advertisements relates back to a previous modular. There's also a dumpster in the back um, and this is kind of a back alleyway. One of the unique features of this modular are these windows that actually open back to what would be kind of an alleyway. So if there was another modular building right here, obviously the other building would jut up against here and these windows would look out onto basically a brick wall. I read that many people were upset about that feature, but I actually think it's quite brilliant because never in any city are all buildings perfect and all windows have a perfectly beautiful view of something very scenic. I'm sure many of you have been into a hotel or to an apartment building of a friend where they have windows or bedroom windows that look out up against a brick wall of another building. So I actually think it was really clever and unique of the designers to actually put that feature into the build. The back of the building is quite plain as this actually would jut up against another building. But the outside display, in my opinion, looks really great. And as I said, is one of the better unique designs I've seen in a long time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the top two floors off and I'm going to go through all the details of each floor one by one. So let's get into it. So you start out building this modular on a 48 by 48 stud base plate and this is different from most modulars that are usually on a 32 stud base plate and as you begin you start with the base and you put in all these tiles for the sidewalk and this lovely mosaic tile on the ground floor of the hotel. So you build this and then you begin building this stairwell and one of the unique features of this stairwell is this spiral what looks to be a spiral wrought iron gate is actually a whip from one of the minifigures and so a very clever use of one of the alternate parts. In here is a couch for a seating area while they're waiting and there's a lovely vase and you can put the reception in there as well to greet you. Another feature is this is a guest book and 
I'm not going to give it away, but if you look at some of the names in the guest book, they reference back to some other modulars in the past. There's a telephone and then a key rack, and the unique part of this build of the key rack is on the other side is actually a piece of artwork. So when you build this, it's dual sided, one for holding keys and one for a piece of art for the gallery. There's also a piece of art here on the wall, and overall a pretty roomy and nice looking hotel entryway. On the other side of the hotel entryway is this art gallery. And what's unique about this art gallery is, once again, it references back to previous modulars that have a main building and then kind of a side business or a side enterprise. Um, the police station has a donut shop on the side, and this hotel has an art gallery on the side. As you can see, as I said earlier, the doors open and close. There's a nice fire hydrant here. And inside this gallery are five pieces of art. And there is this kind of Picasso-esque painting on the wall. There is this cube. And over here, there is a bust under this water fountain. And this bust actually is from a famous artist from another set. Once again, I'm not gonna give away all the secrets because part of the joy of building this was reading the instruction booklet and trying to figure out what parts of the set relate to other previous modulars. Another thing about this staircase is when you build this and put the bust in here, it also creates this water fountain under the staircase, which is a very nice detail and nice touch. And then you build this staircase leading up to um, an outdoor cafe, which I'll explain in a bit. Now the name of this art gallery is called El Cubo, which is the cube, and it's obviously based on cubism and cubism art. There are five pieces of art. Once again, you'll see kind of a Picasso-esque drawing here, two paintings on the wall, and two sculptures, totaling five, and also a desk. It is a very small and cramped art gallery. I find it even hard to fit the minifigure in there unless they're kind of standing. But I wanna say that these modulars are not meant to be totally accurate. They're really meant to give you the feeling or the idea of a hotel in an art gallery. And so the proportions and scale aren't always going to be 100% accurate. So there's a staircase leading up to an outdoor cafe, which I'll explain. This is one of the last builds, this wrought iron entryway, which looks really fantastic. Overall, it's a really nice, fun, straightforward build. There wasn't anything too challenging here. Now as you begin to build the second floor, you then build the outdoor cafe and this has a lovely little bar section, a little table here and this palm tree and another table here. And as you can see, I've put the accountant here. He has a beverage in his hand and you can comfortably fit one or two minifigures there. There's a lot of detail in there and it's a small but nice feature. On the second story of the hotel, there are two bedrooms and these bedrooms contain a lot of details it's almost too cramped in there in this room there is a bed there is this armoire and a desk with a seating area and in this room which is a little larger it has a bed and then there is a really detailed desk here with what looks to be a keyboard a light and a chair and once again another armoire here and as I said before, the doors do open to each of the bedrooms. It also has the stairway leading from the first floor up to the second and eventually to the third. Now I can tell you that this space is extremely cramped and you wouldn't have a lot of playability of trying to have a minifigure walk up the stairs because I can barely even put my finger through there. Um, and this room is incredibly small. It doesn't contain a bathroom, nor does this room contain a bathroom. I think that might be one of, if not the only, mistakes of this set is that it's okay to have a small room but not to have a bathroom that is the one thing that is a little unforgiving but other than that very small very cramped but very detailed second floor as i said all of these windows do open up now as you come up to the third floor this is the luxury suite 
There is a stairwell here and it leads into the hotel suite with the opening and closing door. This master suite does have a very detailed bathroom with a really luxurious tub. It has a sink as well as a toilet over here. So it's a very detailed bathroom and the bedroom is incredible as well. It has a king size bed. Um, obviously there are some chocolates left on the bed. There's a lamp on either side. There's a chair for sitting and there is a really lovely armoire here um, that was really fun to build. These armoires take a lot of pieces and they're built in these kind of square blocks and then slid in from the side. I had a lot of fun building the armoire and also this old-fashioned television that sits here as well. The room is incredibly detailed. It's almost too detailed. Um, I think the luxury suite is almost perfect and much better than the second floor room. And the person in the luxury hotel suite also gets a door that leads out to a balcony that opens up. But the top floor is a really fantastic floor. And then on top of that, there is the roof and the roof has this open glass top as you see in many old-fashioned buildings um, to let natural light in. You also build this incredibly wonderful spire here. Once again, this wrought iron gate around the side uses snakes to attach in to make a look of wrought iron. I'm not going to give it away, but it harkens back to another module where instead of snakes, they use skeletons to make kind of a wrought iron gate. Once again, it's an homage to a previous set. As you notice, there is not a wrought iron gate on this side of the building. Now this would be where a nether modular attaches to it. In my opinion that's still not an excuse not to complete this when that's just another thing that you know takes away from the set just a bit. So overall an incredible hotel really well designed a lot of cool features so overall my opinion of this set is that it is probably the best modular building i've seen in the last several years i think it's way better than assembly square much better than corner garage i think it beats out the downtown diner although that was one of my favorites this is a really wonderful design has incredible detail and I will definitely be making this one of the centerpieces of my European city strip that I plan on building this year. It was an incredibly fun build and it was worth every penny of the $199. So that's my review for today. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time.